coming up today on Live at Lunch, we are live at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine, and we'll take you a tour on a tour of the school. We'll preview a couple of students as well. And Chris, how's the weather out there? Well, well, Demetria, much drier weather here for the next several days. That also means some warmer temperatures, but rain's in the forecast. I'll let you know when, coming up on Live at Lunch. Hello, welcome to Live at Lunch. I'm Demetria McClinton. Well, topping our headlines, the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine is officially open. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley attended this morning's grand opening ceremony. He says the high-tech facility will provide a great environment for new students. He says the college will not only impact the local economy, but also the states. Not only is it going to help Dothan because all the students coming in and the, uh, the amount of money that will be spent here is going to be tremendous. So there will be more businesses, more hotels, uh, you know, so many things that will be brought into this area. But once you train a physician and that physician comes to an area in Alabama, uh, it puts a, a million to a million and a half dollars uh, with a multiplier into the economy everywhere a new physician goes. ACOM is dedicated to giving students the best education. That's why the classrooms have the latest technology. Dean of Students Dr. Philip Reynolds takes us on a tour. So this is what we call our simulation suite. This entire wing of the building is our clinical competency center. These sim men, uh, what they can do, they, they blink their eyes, they, they can cry, they can bleed, they can, uh, they have their chest rises and falls as they breathe, they have heart sounds. Uh, you can hook up IVs, you can take their blood pressure, you can take their pulse. We have a controller sitting behind a one-way uh, glass that uh, can actually speak through the sim man to the student. So the student actually has to ask them questions and they will respond to the student. And so, um, you know, it, it, we try to make it as lifelike as possible. That, that's the key. We also have one extra model that um, simulates labor and delivery. So we have a female model that can actually deliver a baby. This is the laboratory for anatomical sciences. We will have full cadaver dissections. What's great about this room is the technology. They have the television monitors with, you know, uh, the, the professor has a camera of his own. He can point to his cadaver. Uh, trying to show students. They have the surgical lamps for lighting. You have to use different power instruments uh, while dissecting cadavers. And we, so we didn't want extension cords all over the floor. So this was just a neat idea to have retractable power cords. This is where the students will really get the meat of their um, clinical skills training. This is our laboratory for osteopathic principles and practice. They really put uh, their knowledge base into practice. And it, uh, for the first two years, they work on each other. Uh, they have two Zoom cameras. The professor will be up here on the podium. And monitors around the room allow for students to watch what the professor's doing. Now, students will also have access to a group study session, study rooms, an auditorium, and even practice exam labs. Well, here's a look at the process leading up to today. Plans for ACOM were announced back in April of 2010. Now, in the following July, construction plans were drawn up. Then in August of that year, Dr. Craig Lenz was hired as dean. The location for the college was chosen in late September, early October. In March of 2011, the Houston County Health Care Authority approved a funding plan for the college. It included a $10 million contribution from the medical center and a $20 million loan from Compass Bank. In December of 2011, ACOM received pre-accreditation. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in January of 2012. More than 500 people attended, including Governor Bentley. In July of 2012, ACOM was granted provisional accreditation. The college began recruiting students for its first class in July of 2012. They received 2,700 applicants, interviewed 450 applicants, and chose only 162 students. In January of 2013, construction started on student housing, and the construction process was complete in May of this year. Well, the process is far from over, though. Leaders have big plans for the college. I believe we can become a university health science center and add other health professions education programs, which are very successful. I can't say what those would be. We'll study them carefully once we get the school going. Uh, I think research. Uh, most colleges of medicine are fairly involved with research, so you know, I think you'll see us start to you know, do some research sorts of things. 
Alabama. Already we have the University of Alabama at Birmingham and the University of South Alabama at Mobile. Both of those schools are state funded, while ACOM is a private, not for profit school. But leaders are confident that they can all work together. Uh, we see ways that we can partner with them. If you look at the medical center, our cancer treatment center is a partner with UAB in cancer treatment protocols and research. We're the third medical school, but they've accepted us very well, and I think that we can all work together for the needs of our region and Alabama, particularly in primary care. Well, there's a shortage of medical schools for students to choose from, but for some of the America's future doctors, ACOM stands out enough to make it worth driving hundreds, even thousands of miles. News for's Matthew McClellan has more. In one week, the doors at Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine will open. But even greater than the community's anticipation for its arrival is the excitement students have before walking the halls for the first time. I'm actually very excited to be part of the inaugural class and to be the first students to utilize the full scope of what the school has to offer. Johnny Chen comes to ACOM all the way from Nevada, and he's not the only one who made a long trip to get here. I'm from Oregon. I drove my Ford Mustang all the way over here. Out of the 162 students enrolled, only four are from the Dothan area. But the state of Alabama is still well represented on campus. I went to the University of South Alabama in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, I've been working as a scrub technician at Spring Hill Hospital in Mobile for the past two years. For the next two years, Andrew Wheat and his classmates will call Dothan home before they once again scatter across the country for two years of residency. But for now, these students are ready to see what their first year of med school has in store. I don't want to expect uh, too much, uh, but uh, I think it's a very good step for, um, for a new school and I'm sure our class will do very well. Everyone's very excited and very dedicated and I just hope that uh, we will glide through the first year uh, with as little problems as possible. One thing that won't be a problem too much free time. With a full grad level course load, the ACOM class of 2017 is ready for academic challenges ahead. It's a little humbling that they wanted to give me this chance, so I'm going to make the best of it and I'm looking forward to it. New building, new classes, new community. Whatever challenges lie ahead, ACOM students say they're proud to start their new beginnings in Dothan. Matthew McClellan, News 4. At this week's orientation, students will meet both faculty and staff, as well as get hands-on with some clinical equipment. Well, the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine offers a four-year curriculum. The first two years are on campus, and the last two are in clinics and hospitals all across the state. In their first semester, students can expect to take anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, even histiology, but they'll also be taking a hands-on approach somewhere in the beginning of their first semester they will actually be exposed to standardized patient actors who will come in and they will learn how to do interviewing skills. Over the next two years those actors then become more and more involved uh, and then begin to present actual clinical scenarios. Uh, so they'll learn how to not only take a history but then to do physical exams and then somewhere in the third semester they'll begin to learn to make assessments of what has the history and the physical given them for information and they'll have to try and figure out uh, like a detective what the clinical problem is with the patient. Both Dothan and Houston County leaders are ready to reap the benefits of the medical college and they say the new addition to the east side of town is already attracting more businesses. It gives us such a great tool to use as we go out and pursue other companies to come in as we pursue growth on the east side of the, of the community. You know, there's already a development talking about coming right out there near the, uh, the college. And that's what you're going to see is, is growth on the east side of the county. I, th I think just the fact that we have a medical school in our community gives us more credibility. Well, I think it's one of the, the biggest game changers and one of the biggest days in the history of our city. So it helps sell Dothan. When we brought the Chinese delegation to Dothan, we took them out to the medical school and they saw the uh, incredible technology that we have here in Dothan. They left believing we can do anything and we know we can. <laughs> so you figure that um, these visitors and friends are gonna come uh, three to four times a year um, and they're going to stay in our hotels and eat in our restaurants and go shopping that should just every should have about a half a million dollars economic impact just from the visitors 
point of view per year. Well, now let's check in with meteorologist Chris Havley for our first look at weather this afternoon. And Chris, you've been asking for the heat. Well, it's finally here, but what else can we expect today? Dimitri, you're definitely right. I'm sure you can relate. It is and we're well, the good news is we've been dry for the most part today. I think we'll stay that way. But coming up, we have some rain chances in the forecast. And we'll take a look at the head weather headlines right now. We have a chance for some showers and storms later this week. But we're going to be warmer again tomorrow, maybe even warmer today. We'll talk about all that in the full forecast coming up when we come back. Now, from the Forewarned Storm Center, meteorologist Chris Havley. Well, welcome back. We're at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine for this Live at Lunch edition, and it's, wow, it is hot out here. I'm lucky they gave us some, uh, right here to Devils as a brochure, too, so I'm cooling myself off, but boy, it is warm out here. Temperatures right now across the area, as we take a look at the graphic here, showing you that temperatures are in the mid to upper 80s across the wire grass at this time. 88 already in Ozark, 84 a little cooler in Dothan, 89 down in Mariana. If later today, we'll start seeing some rain chances popping up. A current look at forewarn radar. We're seeing some rain down toward the Florida Panhandle. I think that's where the majority of the showers and storms will remain today. Could see a few of those climb their way back north a little bit toward the wire grass, the central parts of the wire grass, as we see that sea breeze move a little farther north, but only about a 20% chance for areas Dothan on northward. Currently in Dothan, we're seeing high, a temperature right now at 84 degrees. The winds are calm, and yeah, we need a breeze out here. It is warm. Pressure at 30.14 inches of mercury, but yes, again, on the bright side, it is not raining today. Looking ahead for the future cast for the rest of the day today, a few scattered showers hours out there down toward the Florida Panhandle, like I said, but only isolated chances for areas pretty much in Dothan northward. We've seen some drier air move in, and our friend, the upper level area of high pressure moving in from the west will help keep our air a little bit stable here for the next several days. So for today, we'll say a high temperature of 90 degrees, and boy, it feels like it out here. We'll see a spotty shower out there and a, a greater chance for showers down in the Florida Panhandle, only about 20% chance for areas north. Winds will be out of the southwest at about 5 miles per hour. Down at the Gulf today, well, could see a few showers and thunder showers down there for that sea breeze, but pretty nice water. It's only a light chop of the protected bays and a moderate rip current risk, which is a little bit of improvement from that high risk we saw last week. Water temperature now at a warm 86. Tonight, isolated showers coming to an end fairly early, then partly cloudy overnight. Low temperature of 72. Could see some patchy fog towards daybreak, so keep that in mind if you're heading out the door tomorrow morning. For your day tomorrow, well, we'll see similar conditions as far as rain chances go. Maybe a little bit, maybe a slightly better chance for areas to the north, but again, drier air is going to be in place. Upper area of high pressure in place, keeping our air a little more stable for tomorrow, so expect a day similar to today, but maybe a little bit warmer as we continue to see those temperatures around and very little rain chances. Take a look at the five-day forecast for the rest of your work week. High temperatures for tomorrow in the low 90s, probably 92. And again, small rain chances will help keep our temperatures uh, warming up a little bit. And for Wednesday through Friday, elevated rain chances. Uh, high temperature right around 90 degrees on Wednesday. Upper 80s for Thursday and Friday. As we see uh, a little more of our familiar weather pattern we've seen this summer. A nice deep trough digging into the eastern United States. So umbrellas definitely needed for the second half of the work week. When we come back, Demetri McClinton has some special guests she's interviewing. We'll join them coming up in just a second. You're watching Live at Lunch with Demetria McClinton and meteorologist Chris Havley. And welcome back. I'm joined by Dr. Christina McManus, and she is the assistant pre professor of physiology here at the medical college. And you actually have some local ties to the area. Yes, I'm from Enterprise, Alabama. I went to um, high school there. So tell me how the area has grown by leaps and bounds, especially with getting this new medical college here. Um, every time I come back home, everything always changes. I think they're getting a Chick-fil-A and Enterprise, which is a big deal. There's a Moe's, Mellow Mushroom, things like that. The Dothan area, Enterprise area, Wiregrass area has grown a lot. And what I was most impressed about you when I was reading over your bio was the fact that you all have um, sort of similar to like a mentorship here mm -hmm. that you have where you work with the students and you help them come up. Tell me why that is so important to you to reach back to the students. Well, each faculty member will have about uh, nine to ten students that work with um, one faculty, and that's just to make sure that they're, they have a successful um, four years throughout their experience here at the college. And that's so important. And even going to school where you went to University of South Alabama as well. 
Right. Just tell me how the, the, what the difference is from going here versus somewhere like that, especially this being in a rural area. Um, the ACOM is actually high tech. It has all electronic. There are electronic textbooks, um, recordings of um, all your uh, lectures and things like that. So that's a little bit different. There's 162 students here at wow. ACOM, which is much more than they had at South. And what, is, what percentage of that are female? 40% uh, of the first class are females. And what does that mean to you as a woman who came up through the program? We were talking off camera and a lot of the women are underrepresented in this field. What does that mean, 40%? Um, I think that it's amazing um, that women are excited to be in the profession and just uh, I think it's great. <laughs> and it seems like the landscape is, is changing nowadays. You're seeing more women doing this as well. Yes, yeah, so statistically women are being, um, are, are growing in the percentage of first classes. So what would you tell to some of those people who will be in your class <laughs> when you start doing, what can they expect? Um, I just think you put a lot of hard work in and then you're going to reap the benefits of it. Um, so just, you know, just hard work and excitement. I think it's an exciting time. And what are your future plans for your particular classroom? Um, just to interact with the students. I'm very excited just to have um, interactions with them, make sure that I'm teaching and that they're learning basically and that you know they can um, not just sit there a lecture and go home and be bored, but you know, be excited and engaged. Exactly, because we were talking about that, retaining the information that they learn in class so they can apply that when they, they actually get into the field. Yes. Well, and thank you so much for coming on Coffee's County's own Dr. Christina McManus. And make sure you stay tuned because we have another person who's coming up as well with a lot more information too. But let's take a look at what's coming up tonight on News 4 at 5 and 6. Alabama retailers are getting ready for the annual tax-free weekend for back-to-school items. We'll tell you which items you should stock up on. Plus, it's the kickoff for the Reaching Higher Camp, a free sports camp for kids. And we'll have more live coverage from the new medical college, including a preview of the future plans. Well, still to come today on Live at Lunch, we are going to speak to another faculty member here at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. But first, let's take a look at today's stocks. Welcome back. I'm sitting here with Dr. Fred Helms, who is the Director of Academic Support here at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. Well, welcome to the show, sir. I'm glad to be here. And thank you for letting me be here at your future home. Sure. We're now, you've only been on the job for about three weeks. That's right. But this area is nothing new to you either. No, I actually grew up in the area, uh, pretty close to Dothan, and have lived here most of my life, except when I was away for, for various times at college. And let's talk more about your position, because you're sort of like a liaison between the faculty and students. Right. One of the interesting things about doctors of osteopathy or osteopathic medical schools is they accept a lot of students who are older, who maybe have had a different job earlier after their first college experience, or just all kinds of background. Maybe they're military. So they're coming back to college, and of course medical school is very difficult. Right. So they are going to have to learn how to learn again in a lot of cases. And I'm going to be doing some assessments with the students to see exactly their learning style, and then we're going to work with them on maximizing their performance while they're here. Okay, you have to give us the scoop. What are some things that you are going to incorporate into their curriculum in order for them to stay here? Okay, Th there are some modern things that are really cool about studying. Um, we all know about online places right. that you can go to learn stuff, but there are even some places you can go that will help teach them anatomy and okay. with pictures and then with questions and cards that they will go through to learn about things like that. And different people learn different ways. So some people are visual, some mm -hmm. people listen to learn, but in medical school you can't just go in and sit and take notes and then go study your notes and take the test. Exactly. You're not going to do it that way. You have to learn the material because that's what you're applying as you see patients. So you have to know it. And it's an uh, active learning style instead of just sort of skimming things. So they're going to really be Im immersed in this. They're going to learn about patient care from the beginning because we have the, la the labs with actual patients in there. So there's a lot of oh, ways wow. to work with that. Mm -hmm. And why is this beneficial? I mean, are you using the model that another school has done or are you all just being innovative on your Some own? Some of it is modeled after some other schools and then other parts of it are innovated. Our are innovative. Our fact that we are paperless, electronic, mm -hmm. is new. That's huge. We are really a 21st century college, but our students are into that, you know, <laughs> iPhones, exactly, iPads, the iPads, everything. <laughs> 
So that's going to be part of the thing here. And then also, we are using some ideas. My particular position is modeled after another medical school that had real good success with their students. With well, we're looking for this. better success. Yes, we're looking for better <laughs> success. We want them to pass their boards and go out and be excellent doctors. Yes, and also make an impact here in the community as well. That's right. We want them to get immersed in that. Well, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Helms, for talking to me, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> and make sure you stick around because we have more with Chris Hadley and another check of the forecast coming up after the break. Uh, we'll see probably sunny skies for the rest of the day today. 20% chance of showers today and tomorrow. A little bit better rain chance coming up for the second half of the work week as we start seeing a little more active weather pattern. Highs will be back in the upper 80s, all that cloud cover and rainfall for Thursday and Friday. All right, and make sure you all tune in Tuesday on Live at Lunch because do you want to get the most money when you resell your home? Oh, of course. Yeah, well, we're going to give you some tips on how you can do that. So make sure you tune in Tuesday at noon. Well, did you have a good time out here? I had a great time. It's a little hot. It's a little hot. It is. We're a little we're lacking in the breeze out here, but <laughs> at least it's not raining, right? Exactly, and we are able to see all the big wigs in Alabama politics, as well as speak to, we spoke to the director of the student affairs, mm -hmm. as well as we spoke to one of the assistant professors. So there's a huge amount of things yeah. that are in store for the students here at the medical college. That's right, and when the governor was here earlier, or the, mayor, the mayor governor was here earlier, uh, the whole place was jam-packed. So luckily, we might get out of here on time, maybe. We'll see. I hope so, so we can get out on time and cool down. That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, that's all the time that we have for now. The boat and beautiful is coming up Next. For more news and weather, visit our web channel at WTVY.com. We'll see you guys later.